back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Sam and I'm the owner of two Etsy shops, Malia Stitches and Jocelyn's Comfy Apparel. Malia Stitches, we offer embroidered kids' birthday shirts and tutus, outfits, holiday outfits, all kind of kid things. And then on um, Jocelyn's Comfy Apparel, we offer uh, graphic tees and scrunchies and hopefully some more things to come. Um, today though, this tutorial is going to be uh, kind of different from what I normally do. Normally I stick with embroidery and stuff like that, but today we're going to do a sewing tutorial. We're going to make this bag. If you don't know, I started Malia Stitches out as a uh, handbag Etsy shop. Um, we didn't get very good or it wasn't very successful selling those items so we switched over to the embroidered birthday shirts and I've had quite a bit of success doing it that way. But I do have some ladies that are interested in learning how to sew bags, handbags and purses. So I want to do maybe a little series if you guys are interested and just here and there pop in a video of making a bag along with all of our other videos that we normally do. So that's what we're doing today. So we are making this tote bag. It's got a front pocket and a zipper. And on the inside, it has an inside pocket. Here, sorry if you can't see that. There's an inside pocket here. All right, so this uh, design originally came from a YouTube channel called Easy to Sew. I will link the video that I got this uh, uh, pattern from down below. I did do a little bit or switched it up a little bit. Um, in the original video, this area is not a pocket, it's just a design feature. So this is all closed off and in that video there's no pocket. But because I saw opportunity for pockets, um, if you know anything about any uh, handbags or if you sew handbags, you know that every opportunity you can turn a feature into a function, you do it. So that's what I did here. I made this pocket here for this bag and um, I did change up the measurements just a little bit and you'll see my measurements as the video goes on um, from theirs they use uh, they're in a different country so they use the metric versus we use the other so um, I had to switch it up a little bit just to make it a little bit easier for um, us when we're cutting out fabric so that we're not cutting out like one and five eighths or something like that. So I just made it a little bit simpler with the measurements and um, that's about it on that. So what you're gonna learn to do today is you're gonna learn how to create a pocket like this. You're going to learn how to sew in a zipper and you're gonna learn how to create a pocket for the inside of your bag on the inside here. So those are pretty much the big main features that you're going to want to learn today. Um, you can also uh, construct a bag without any of those features. Um, just have the main body panels, just have the main lining panels and the straps. And that's how you and put it together exactly the same way. And you'll just have a basic tote bag. So bag making is pretty much the same. You just add in the little features that you want. All right, so I wanna do one more little shout out. I ordered this shirt from La Belle Petite Boutique. They're a uh, website where they sell mainly scrunchies, but they do some t-shirts as well. And it is a mom and her family, her little girls, they all help out, pitch in to sew all the scrunchies and make the shirts. And I absolutely love this shirt. I also bought some scrunchies, but I left them upstairs, sorry. Um, but I will also link her website down below where you could also purchase this shirt. So I'm going to be featuring this shirt today. And thank you so much, Miss Shar. We love you. So let's get started. 
So I wanted to show you the scrunchies. So this is the one she named Samantha. I'm not sure if she named it after me, but because she named it Samantha, I had to, had to get it. It's actually, um, it's a flannel, so it's very soft. It's very large, as you can see, compared to my hand. So it's an extra large scrunchie. So she sent us that one. And then she sent us this one as a little thank you, a little gift. And Malia loves it. It's so cute. Rainbows and clouds. And then is her information where you can find her Facebook, Instagram, and her shop. She also has a TikTok too. So make sure you guys go show her some love and um, check out her shop. Okay. So I'm going to try this out. Um, this is me making it for the first time and hopefully it all works out and you guys can follow along and learn how to make a tote bag. So first we have to make our front pocket panel piece. So to do that you're going to take two pieces of paper and you're going to tape them together. Then you're going to cut it down to 14 by 8. So it'll be 14 inches long by 8 inches wide. Then you're going to take your ruler or a ruler on the 8 inch side you're going to measure over three and a half inches and you're going to draw a mark on your paper. Then you're going to turn it and measure the 14 inch side and you're going to measure down six inches, draw a mark. Then you're going to connect this mark with this mark with a rounded um, line. You could use a plate or something and line up the edges of your plate to those marks and trace or you can hand or freehand it, and that's what I did. So I just went like this and drew a line, uh, kind of curved, to meet that other side. And then you're going to cut that out. So with that, you have your template for your um, pocket panel. This is going to be the st long straight edge. Is going to be where the fold is and then one more thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to measure up two inches from the bottom of your piece here and draw a line this line will come in handy later so you'll just draw a line ignore this one I love these friction pens, so they're a lifesaver for me. So you've got your two inch line here, your fold is here, and your curves here. All right. So that's how you make your front pocket panel. The measurements for the rest of your um, items or rest of your pieces will be you'll need two pieces like this that measure 14 by 16 so it'll be 16 inches wide 14 inches long this is for the front and the back for the inside you will need two pieces that are 11 and 1 fourth inches long by 16 inches wide. You'll need two of those. For the inside you will also need two pieces that are 3 and 1 fourth inches long or wide by 16 inches long. Okay, and you'll see why that, that's important. 
Um, you will need for your handles or your straps, you'll need two pieces that are four inches wide by 20 inches long. And we're gonna add an inside pocket. So you need a piece that is 12 inches by 8.5 inches. And then this is a patchwork tote design. So for our very front outside, you'll need to cut strips that are two and a half inches wide by 14 inches long. And you'll need enough to cover the 16 inches. So I just cut quite a few. I should have enough here and I will show you how we put those together here in just a minute, but I have quite a few of those to work with. Um, you'll also need a zipper that is 15 inches, which I'll have to pull it out. I didn't grab that yet. For the inside of your pocket, your outside pocket, you'll need another piece of fabric that is 16 by 14. Hopefully that makes sense. So this piece of fabric that 16 by 14 goes on the outside. These will go on the outside, these strips. And then you need two pieces of main body panels that are also 14 by 16. Okay, that's your outside fabric pieces. Your inside fabric pieces, you'll need the three and one fourth by 16, two of those. You'll need the 11 and one fourth by 16, two of those. And you'll need your pocket fabric, which is the 12 by eight and a half. So, and then your straps, you'll need those. Those are uh, the uh, four by 20 inch. Okay, so your interfacing. Interfacing is what makes the bag um, sturdy, uh, long lasting, things like that. Um, there are so many different types of interfacing. You could have lightweight, heavyweight, medium weight, medium to lightweight, medium to heavyweight. Um, they're made from different types. There's sew in, there's fusible, there's uh, woven, um, there's all kinds of different types of interfacings. Don't let all of that, all of those words um, confuse you. So I don't know how to explain this the best way. Um, depending on how structured you want your bag to be, whether you want it to stand up by itself, or if you want it to be kind of floppy and kind of loose, um, kind of like a duffel bag, or if you want to be real floppy, kind of like a beach bag, where just kind of the contents inside of it is what holds it up. That'll determine what type of uh, interfacing you use. So if you want it to be more sturdy and stand on its own, you'll need a heavier interfacing. If you want to kind of loop or uh, floppy, but not too floppy, then you'll need a medium weight stabilizer. If you, um, or I'm sorry, interfacing. If you want um, it to just kind of flop around like a beach bag, you may use either a lightweight or none at all. That's up to you. So, um, we're gonna have this bag kind of floppy, but not too floppy. So what I chose to use was this fusible fleece. I really like using fusible fleece because um, it gives you structure, but not too much structure. And it's soft, it's washable. You throw it in the wash, no problems. So that's why I like to use it. It kind of feels like quilt batting, if you've ever used quilt batting, but it's similar to that in feel. And this one is fusible, so one side of it has a glue on it. 
you just iron it onto your piece that you're sewing with and off you go so I cut out two pieces for the um, outside of the bag and they are um, 14 inches I'm sorry 14 inches by 16 inches so I have two of those so for pockets you want to give them some structure right you want them to be durable but you don't want them to be stiff so I'm going to use this interfacing and it is let me get my bolt so I can show you This is a medium to heavy weight fusible and it is Pellon brand and it is the 931 TD. Hopefully you can see that. This interfacing is very inexpensive. Um, I think I bought a bolt of it on Amazon for like $20 very inexpensive. Um, the fusible fleece also I buy it bought it um, by the bolt and it was probably it's it's quite a bit more expensive it was probably 60 to 70 dollars for a whole bolt but you can buy just what you need um, at Joann's at um, Hobby Lobby, wherever you get your craft supply or your fabrics and stuff, they have all of this stuff there as well. So with that interfacing, I cut. Where did I? Where did I put it? Oh my goodness! Here's my pocket. I must have picked it up and put it up there. Okay, so um, I cut. 4 inches by 20 inches to go with my um, straps. I cut another piece of that that is um, 14 by 16 for the front pocket. With We're going to uh, fuse it to um, these straps once we sew the straps together. Then I cut another piece of it that was um, 6 by 8.5. Whoa! You have to come and see it. Okay, I will in just a minute. Okay. Um, the reason why I didn't do the full 12 inches on the pocket on this one is because you're going to fold it in half and it'll be pretty thick if you have two layers of that interfacing stacked on top of each other. So I only cut it to 6 inches instead of 12 inches by 8. So I think I put it up here on accident. Okay. So as you can see, it only covers half of the piece there because you are going to fold it in half to create your pocket. And you don't want that too bulky in there one one layer of that's plenty so that's why I did that all right so hopefully all of that made sense and um, let me grab my zipper I sh I'll we'll fuse all of these together so let's do that first. all right so I found this zipper it's actually a 20 inch zipper so we'll have to cut it down but I will show you how to do that well, and then I forgot to mention we'll need a p little piece of fabric that's like an inch and a half by three inches and that's for the zipper stop and I'll show you how to make that as well but here I'm at my heat press you can also use an iron if you don't have a heat press um, today you'll you uh, either way we will eventually be using both uh, an iron and a heat press so uh, whatever works for you you can just use the iron this is just kind of a little bit quicker 
So I'm just taking the uh, 931 interfacing bumpy side. It's going up because that's where the glue is. Putting the wrong sides touching, the wrong side of my fabric touching the bumpy side. And I'm going to do that with both of these pieces. Here. Lining that up. Then I'm going to take my Teflon sheet, put it over top so I don't get any glue on the top of my heat press. And then we'll just press it for maybe 10 seconds. And I have mine set at 300 degrees. That's just what I normally have it set at. Okay, now we're going to shift it. It's hot, so be careful. We're going to shift it over. And I can see here that I've got a little extra hanging off. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that before I heat press it so it doesn't make a mess here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer, I think. So it may be better. So now you have your interfacing fused on the back of your strap pieces. There's the other one. So those pieces are done for now so here is our pocket piece inside pocket piece so again we're going to line it up here it's only going to cover half of that piece of fabric I'm going to turn it the other way so that the sticky of the glue doesn't get on my little mat here if it leaks out a little bit Teflon sheet there, press it. Okay, so now you can see that the interfacing's on half of that. So what I'm going to do while I'm here, is I'm going to fold this so that the right sides are facing each other. Fold it right in half. And we're going to go ahead and press that because we need that uh, fold there anyway. Okay. So now that's nice and pressed. We've got our crease there, interfacings on this side, so that piece is ready to go. And so we're going to get, let's see, we're going to get one of our main body panels here. And we're going to get our reusable fleece, bumpy side up. it up with our, it's probably easier to do outside of the heat press here, match up our fabric to it. Wrong side of the fabric is touching the bumpy side of the fleece. Somebody really wants to get a hold of us today. Keeps calling our phone. Just smooth it out so that it's nice and centered. I'm going to press this one a little bit longer because the fleece is thicker and it takes a little bit more time to heat it up than the uh, other interfacing. 
So we'll try 20 seconds here. I'm gonna kind of test it to see if it's fused on there, and it is. So then I have to scoot this over because my heat press isn't quite big enough. And we'll press it again. And so there you go. You've got one piece fused with your fusible fleece. And I'll repeat that to the other piece and then I'll come back. Okay, so I'm over here where my iron is. And I have my straps pieces here. I've got some clips. You can use clips or you can use um, pins, whatever, whatever you have, whatever works for you. What we're going to do is turn our um, fabric where the long sides of the fabric are touching, wrong sides together. And we're going to press a line into the fabric here. might be able to do this on your heat press I just tried it it was a little challenging for me so we're gonna do it this way instead okay so now that you have that pressed you're gonna open it up like this you're gonna take your raw edges and turn them into that line you just <coughs> pressed sorry you're turn this into that line you just pressed and then you're going to press it again. Okay. Now you're going to take the other side, do the same thing, turn it into the line you just pressed. And press it. This is kind of tedious, but it is worth all the pressing. Okay. Now that you have those two pieces pressed in like that, you're going to fold it back in half so that your edges are touching like this. to press. This hides those raw edges and gives the strap a finished look. And you're just going to clip it together to hold it all in place so that it's ready for sewing. So there's one strap. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have all of the things prepped for now or up as far as I can. And we are going to finish up these straps first. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to sew like an eighth of an inch down the edge, the open edge of the strap, and then come back down the opposite edge to finish it off. We'll do that real quick. you can see those two strips of stitching one on each side 
Now our strap is finished and ready to be sewn into the back. So we're going to do the same thing on the other one here real quick. to work on our uh, patchwork part. So take your strap strips, just randomly match them together or unless you have a specific way you want to have them matching, you can do it however design you want. You can lay them all out first and put them in order which way you want. Uh, the reason for patchwork means it it's random, you're putting different scraps of fabric together. Um, patchwork is a great way to use up scraps. And you could really make this entire bag out of pa patchwork pieces like this. Just make them this the length and the width of each panel or each piece and you can do it that way as well. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up two pieces right sides together and you're going to stitch quarter of an inch seam all the way down the long side make sure to back stitch at the beginning and the end You're welcome to press it if you want. I'm just going to press it at the end. I'm going to take another piece and decide which one I want to use. I'm going to line that up now with this piece. Right sides together. We're going to stitch down the edge, same thing, quarter of an inch, seam allowance down the long edge here. Back stitch at the beginning and end. Right, open that up. Pick another piece. We're going to do the same thing all the way down. So just until you reach the 16 inch length you need. That's how many strips you're going to put on there. Here, When we're done, we'll count them up so I can give you an exact how many strips I use. That way you know for when you make yours. So I'm just going to keep going and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so now we're back over by the iron. Here's my panel that I sewed all the strips together with. And then I'm just going to iron it out as best that I can. Okay, so I'll flip this over, give the front side a press too, make sure everything looks good. There we go, it's all pressed out. We're going to take it over to the cutting mat and cut it down to size. Okay, so I do have this quite a bit bigger than 16 inches. So, let's see. Adjust this. A little bit here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine strips would be 16 inches. So, what did I do with my little ruler here? 
I'm gonna go see if I have a canvas. I'm just going to... I want the two end pieces to be somewhat similar in size. So I'm going to cut a little bit off of this side and a little bit off of this one um, to make them similar. So you've got 16 inches this way. You should have 14 inches this way. And we do. You're welcome to clean up the edges so that they all line up. Like this. So you don't have that jagged line there. Same thing on the other side. Try not to cut away too much length because you don't want to lose that 14 inches. We're just evening everything out here. Okay, so now you have your panel piece. That is 14 by 16. We're going to take our piece that we made, our template piece. We're going to fold this in half. And if I if my math is right, this should just fit right on here like this. And it does. What we're going to use this to do is cut this area out. So you could mark it with a pen if you wanted to. But make sure you have this long edge on the fold. The fold's right here. And then we're just going to cut this out here. There you go. And now you have your front panel of your tote bag. So we have another piece that we need to do this to. So let me go grab that real quick. Of course the this is, um, I'm just using scrap fabric so nothing matches really. I tried to make it match as much as I could but not really. So again this is the lining of your uh, outside pocket. So what we're going to do is fold this in half. This piece also measures 14 by 16. Put your template on here, long side on the fold. Okay. And then we're going to cut this out here. So the pocket lining and the outside panel should be exactly the same, like that. Okay, so now you're going to take your piece of the interfacing, the medium to uh, heavyweight interfacing fusible, and you're going to line this up. You could also probably do it this way. That way you don't have the extra hanging off there. Fold it in half. Whoops. My goodness. There we go. And put your pattern piece on here and cut that out too. That way you don't have that extra hanging off and getting glue all over your stuff. 
there. Okay, so now you're going to take this piece that has all your patchwork, or your patchwork piece, you're going to line it up with this, bumpy side up, wrong sides touching the bumpy side. You can either iron it or take it to the heat press and you're going to adhere that, that interfacing to this piece. So I'm going to go do that real quick. Be right back. Okay, so I've got my interfacing here attached. I'm going to take both my outside uh, patchwork panel, my matching pocket lining panel here. I'm going to put them right sides together. And you can either clip it, pin it, don't secure it at all, whatever you prefer. I'm just going to this, put a couple clips on it so it's kind of stable. It's not really lined up over here, so let's adjust it a little bit. You can just kind of run your fingers across it like that and slide things around. Probably would be better if this was uh, flat, not bumpy, or ironed out. So I'm going to do that real quick behind you a little bit better. but I'm just using quilters cotton fabric here you can use any fabric really whatever you prefer this one um, is just going to be for my daughter Malia to carry her things back and forth from grandma's house because that's where she goes during the day when I'm at work and she always has armload of toys she has to take so this will help her carry those things so anyway, we've got this um, put on here. What we're going to do is we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to sew right here on either side. Leave the rest alone. Just sew right here on the curves. All right. I'm going to use a uh, quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, now I have those two areas sewn together. gonna see if this works because I haven't done this one before so we're trying something new in my mind it works let's cut these little slits here make sure not to cut past the seam then you're going to reach up there turn it right side out and that lining fabric should set up nicely on the back side of that patchwork panel. You will have to press it. So we will take it over to the iron. Sorry, I bumped you guys. Take it over to the iron and press that seam down nice and crisp there. And then we'll bring it back and we'll do a top stitch to hold it in place. So I'll go press it and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have it pressed. So I'm going to stitch here, just an eighth of an inch top stitch, just to hold all that in place, give it a little decorative look.
Okay, so if this bothers you that it's kind of flap, flapping like this, hold on, let me get you where you can see what you're doing, what I'm talking about. Having a tripod is not the easiest thing here. Okay, so if you don't like that it kind of flops around like this, you're welcome to do a basting stitch all the way around here to secure that pocket piece to the back side here. But you don't have to if you don't want to. All right, so I'm gonna go get my front panel. So this is the main front panel. This is our patchwork panel. We're going to line these up here. Right. So essentially what we just did was we created these little pockets here. And they are lined now so that they are nice and neat. So I'm going to just pin or clip this together just um, slightly here. Okay, so you can, sorry, you can, so what we did was created these little pockets here. They're lined pockets now. What you can do is do a basting stitch all the way around not stitching this because that's the opening for the pocket pocket but you can stitch across here and across the top if you wanted to to hold both of those pieces together so for this bag in particular we have to create a the depth using this pan these panels we did not cut separate panels to create the depth we're going to do that with these so if we were to leave the pocket as is and we created that depth that pocket would the bottom of that pocket would be at the very bottom of the back and i don't know about you but i personally don't like digging my hand all the way down to the bottom of the bag to find what i need so we are going to that's why we measured and marked that two inch line and as you can see on the pattern, there's that two inch line there. What we're gonna do to create the depth is we're gonna cut a two inch by two inch box out of each side. That's going to, and I'll show you how to do all of that in just a minute, but that's going to give us our depth. So because we chose two inches by two inches, we need to have this at two inches because the bottom of two inches of this panel will be tucked under the bottom. I hope that makes sense. And then obviously two inches of it is going to be tucked to the side as well. But the reason I did this is because I wanna stitch these two panels together at, two, at a two inch length here from the bottom. So I'm gonna go get my pin and my ruler so we're going to use this ruler measure up two inches so we've got one two inches measured up here we're going to draw a line this is a friction pin so the heat will make it go away this line will not stay you can use a chalk pen, you can use a water soluble pen, whichever you prefer. I like this one because it goes away with heat. So we draw that two inch line there. We're gonna take this whole panel. It will include the back or the front main panel and your patchwork panel. We're gonna stitch those together at that two inch line. Okay, okay. So, let me get you back where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now when you reach in here, you're, you're stopped right there. Your items will not go any further than that line. 
Another thing you can do, if you don't want this to be one solid pocket like it is now, you can sew down the center and you can have two separate pockets. However you want to design this, that's the great thing about making your own bags. You can make them however you want, add whatever features you want. And so um, you can stitch it down here. That way you have two separate pockets. However you want to do it, I'm just going to leave it open because Malia can throw her tablet or whatever in there and go and it'll be easy to get to and she can get from to it from both sides. So this panel is complete minus our two inch by two inch pieces we need to cut out. So let's do that. I'm going to measure two inches by two inches here. Okay, so big, big thing here. When you cut this out, do not cut this stitch line. Cut just below it. That way it doesn't interfere with that line we just stitched. So I'm going one, two inches in, and we are two inches high, and take our scissors and we're just going to cut through all the layers and cut out that square. And again, don't cut the stitch line, leave it intact, just cut right below it. You can use your rotary cutter too, it might be easier. Okay. All right, so your very front panel is set. We're going to I'll go get the back panel. And this is the back of your bag. It, you can mirror this, do the same thing on the back side if you wanted to, but for this purpose, we're just gonna have a plain back. So we're gonna set these aside for now. You can cut, here we'll have to cut out the two inches and two inches, so I guess let's go ahead and do that. And cut those out. You can mark it like this, or you can take Piece that you just cut out and use that as a guide. Okay, so these this panel, this panel is complete minus the straps. So we'll put the straps on here in a little bit. Let's construct the inside. So we need to prep our zipper. So my zipper is too long. So each zipper has a little stop here. And the zipper pull has a stop on this end. We are going to attach a zipper stop on this end. So we want to keep the zipper stop on this end. Um, that way when we unzip the bag, the zipper doesn't come flying right off the zipper teeth. 
So we need to measure 15 inches and we're gonna measure 15 inches from that zipper stop there to the end of the zipper here. And I'm going to, I'm actually gonna do 15 and a half just so I have a little wiggle room on the end here. And I'm just gonna cut it. This is a nylon zipper, so they're easy to cut. The teeth are plastic, so don't uh, put it near or on your heat press or anything like that because you'll melt it. But anyway, we're moving on. So we have our zipper here. This end is cut. We need to create a stop so that the zipper doesn't come flying off. So we're going to take our piece that we measured uh, one and a half by three, fold it in half. We're going to place our zipper on here like this. Just kind of in the middle. This, this we're just using it as a template here. And we're going to mark along the side here. Like this and like this. We're trying to create a pocket that is big enough for the zipper to slide in. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch on those lines. Back stitch always. I know you can't see what I'm doing here but I will show you in just a second. So now I have stitched lines on the lines I just drew. So I'm going to cut this excess off. You don't need all of that there. Okay. Now we're going to turn this right side up. You might need some help with a turning tool if you have one or a pin. Just don't poke too hard so you don't um, make a hole in it. Okay, so we've turned this out. Now we have these raw edges here. You need to tuck those under. not really that easy to do. Takes some time and some fiddling, but it can be done. your best to make it even as possible. Okay, so now we're going to press this real quick so that everything stays in place. Slide it, the zipper inside there. You might have to trim 
the zipper down a little bit like this so it'll slide in there nicely. Just don't cut too close to the teeth. So now that that's on there, we're going to stitch across here, stitch like a box around that whole thing. Go slow when you're stitching over the zipper teeth, um, just because your machine might not like the bulk of that. It shouldn't cause any problems or needle breaks, but it sometimes can. So I'm just stitching like an eighth of an inch seam here. I like to kind of back stitch a little bit over that area because it's going to get quite a bit of tension from the zipper pulling. Now I'll stitch around. So it doesn't look the greatest, but it's okay. Clean up your ends there. Okay, so now you've got your zipper stop there. Your zipper is prepped and ready to go. We'll set that aside. Okay, so we're now going to prep our pocket. What we need to do is stitch up over leave a gap stitch over here and stitch back down that gap is to fold this right side out so i'm going to do that real quick okay now that this is sewn we're going to clip these edges here these corners do not cut your stitch line. This just helps with turning. It takes the bulk out of the corners. On this one, do not cut past your stitch line. There we go. Okay, now we have our hole here. We're gonna turn it. Press out your corners. Okay. So you're going to fold in that opening and take it over to your iron, heat press, whatever you want to use, and we're going to press that flat. Now that's pressed flat, there's the opening. We're going to get two pins or a couple pins because you have to have pins for this set portion. We're going to fold this in half. And we're going to pin here. We're just finding the center. Our opening is right here. And we're going to take our panel piece. Do the same thing, fold it in half, find our center, put a pin in there. Okay. Open 
open that up. Now we're going to line up those two pins. Now, for this one, we need to keep in consideration that our zipper is going to be right here and that we need the two inches down here at the bottom. Right, you don't want your pocket to fold under uh, the bottom part of your bag. So line your ruler up at the two inch mark there and just kind of eyeball it. You don't want it too high because you don't want that pocket right up against your zipper and you don't want it too low because you don't want the bottom of your pocket right up against the bottom of the bag there. So let me tell you my measurements here. So that's about three inches from the bottom and two and a half inches from the top. And let's see, we are um, about four and a half inches on that side. We should be four and a half inches on this side. And we're slightly off, so I'm going to tug it over just a little bit. So now we're four and a quarter on this side. Oh my goodness, I don't have enough room. And we're four and a quarter on this side. So this is now center. Okay. Just make sure it looks even. Make sure you're the same three inches here, three inches here. On each corner that way it's not crooked two and a half two and a half okay so I'm gonna take these pins out here and I'm just gonna put them in here to hold this pocket in place cutting through all layers we're gonna take this to the sewing machine we're gonna stitch eighth of an inch all the way around these three sides do not stitch the top because that's the pocket opening okay Again, you want to backstitch a couple of times at the top because you're going to have a lot of tension there from getting in and out of that pocket. So. so with that being done, we have closed up this hole here. And we have secured this pocket to the lining panel. So now you have your inside pocket set. So let's take our zipper. We are going to, we want the zipper to make sure that it opens this way, right? So we want to kind of smash it in between this panel and then this is your three and one quarter inch by um, 16 inch piece you've got two of those you'll need that piece you'll need your panel with the pocket and you'll need your zipper so we are going to line the zipper up like this the teeth are facing up and we're going to kind of sandwich that there i'm just eyeballing this at the moment to make sure i have this all correct and i do so we're going to line this zipper up right here Scoot it over a little bit more if you wanted to. So here I'm lining up the edge of this zipper with the edge of the fabric. I'm going to move my zipper pull out of the way. And we're just going to clip this here. We're going to do this uh, in steps. That way, those who've never sewn a zipper can um, try this out. So, I need to get more clips. Sorry, guys.
So what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch all the way across here, but towards this end here, we want, we don't want to catch this tab in the zipper. We want it to be standing free. So we're going to kind of tuck it under a little bit like this. Let's measure it like an inch. And we're going to kind of um, tuck it. I don't know if you can really tell what I'm doing, but I'm kind of tucking it out of the way so that when I stitch across there, it doesn't catch this into the seam. You want this air, this to be freestanding. So I'm going to go to my machine. Now I'm going to put my zipper foot on. So for my machine, this foot is the standard foot that comes with it. And this is what a zipper foot looks like. If you haven't used a zipper foot before, what it does is it gives you free range to get around that zipper pull and around the zipper teeth um, a lot easier than just using your standard foot. So how do I want to sew this on here? This. So my zipper foot you can clip it on either the left or the right side i'm clipping it on the left side of the foot like this so i'm going to put my zipper up here like this What that, what's that doing? Is this going to allow those teeth to run underneath that zipper foot there and let you stitch right up against there without having the bulk of that zipper um, underneath your foot? So, I'm just going to test here make sure that that doesn't hit my foot, that I have the needle placed in the right place. It is in the center. Okay. Maybe it's not. Yes. It is in the center, my needle's in the center, so I turned my dial here to make sure it was not going to hit my foot real quick. And I think we are good, it's all clear, so we're going to start back stitch. Just go slow. If you're new, so that you can guide that in there, you're lining up that zipper tape with the top edge of the panel there and we are sewing close to that zipper but not too close and then when you come up to the zipper pull just stop Make sure your needle's down, lift up your presser foot, and pull that zipper out of your way. And then keep going. Okay, here we're going to kind of tuck this under out of the way. If I can get it tucked there like that hopefully you can see it's tucked up under out of the way and we're just going to continue on when you get right to the edge of that zipper you want to back stitch there to give it some support and then just sew right off of it and there's that one there's your zipper now attached to your panel there. Now we have to take this top panel, your three and one quarter inch 
and we're going to line it up wrong right sides facing the zipper you can pin that if you want we are going to sew that just exactly the same way we sewed the other the zipper itself now the reason why I didn't sew those together in one step is because for beginners it's very hard to keep all of that those layers together the zipper the back pin or the main body panel and this decorative panel but if you're more advanced you're welcome to sandwich all that together and sew it all at one piece and we will do that on the other side I was just trying to be uh, beginner level and not so beginner level with zippers so here I'm coming up against that zipper pull so I'm gonna keep my needle down reach underneath here lift my presser foot up and slide that zipper out of the way now again you can also clip all this on if you want um, to hold it in place or pin it whatever you have whatever makes you the most comfortable again we're going to make sure this is tucked out of the way just going to sew all the way off of there attaching both pieces when you get kind of towards that folded up area it will be bulky just go slow back stitch all right so now you open this up now your zipper is sandwiched in there nicely you can take it over to your iron and press it and then we'll come back and do a top stitch there so i'll be right back okay so now we have that sewn on there this is pretty much ready to assemble all together here so this is the top this is where you'll look in here's your zipper inside there is your pocket and then your back panel there the only thing else we need to do with this panel at this time is cut our two by two squares out of the bottom corners here so I'm just lining everything up so that it's even best that I can and then again if you saved your little pieces you can use that as a guide from the front that we cut out or you can use your ruler here so I'm two inches this way and I'm two inches this way I'm just going to draw a line scoot it over and I'll do the same thing on the other side Okay, so now we are ready to sew everything together. What we're going to do is we're going to line up our zipper tape like this. Put a pin or a clip or something right there so that doesn't shift. That's important. It needs to be lined up. Then you can line up the rest. Like so. Okay, that's one side on the other side. We're going to tuck this out of the way. That's why we left that gap there so we can tuck it out of the way. We don't want it in the um we don't want it in this seam at all we want it freestanding so we're going to tuck it way out of the way 
if it will let us. It's kind of tedious. And then we're going to line up these two seams here. You want those to be even lined up, so that's important. So we'll put a clip there first, and then we'll line up the rest. Take it to the sewing machine. You're going to sew down this end across the bottom, leaving this square alone, leaving this square alone. Sew up the top. Once we do that, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is sewn together. I did have some shifting on my fabric. I don't think that'll be an issue once we uh, sew that in place. I think it'll be okay. But here, I did have an issue with getting my presser foot to slide over this bulk. This is where you have that zipper pull, that freestanding zipper pull or zipper tab, however you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. So I had to, you could either just leave your, um, leave your zipper foot on your machine and sew that first or um, what I did was I scooted my needle all the way over to the side so that my um, presser foot wasn't bumping up against that and then it just stitched over it nicely. So that was kind of in the way, a struggle, but two fixes would be to either use your zipper foot across there or move your needle all the way over and then stitch it so that you don't have the bulk of your presser foot bumping up against that. All right, all right. So, um, what? Are you naked? Or are you dressed? I tried to look! Beautiful! I have this on! You're beautifully dressed. Too for my feet. Okay. 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 So now we're going to craft, close up these squares here. You are going to, so it's like this. You're going to pull your fabric apart like this, and line those edges up. Again, this is where my fabric was shifted a little bit, so I just have to adjust where I line that up so that it catches across that whole seam and there's no holes. And then you're just going to stitch across that bottom here. You're going to do the same thing on the other side, and then this panel will be completely finished. Oh, I did need to mention that you need to line up this seam here as close as you can with this seam so that it looks seamless on the inside but other than that this is all set your inside lining pieces are constructed together here's your pocket your zipper we can reach up here and we can poke this if I left enough uh oh we're getting ready to go eat, so that's why they're rushing around up there. Might not have left enough room to pull that through. Not right this second. There we go. Okay, so now we have our zipper pull. zipper pull and here and we're set to go one rule of thumb is which probably won't matter for this bag but uh, so one thing I forgot to mention is we need to leave a little gap here for turning and I didn't do that so I have to go back uh, with the seam ripper and open up these stitches just a little bit. This is the very bottom. Sorry about that. 
We need to leave a um, opening here at the bottom about three or four inches uh, for turning and another rule of thumb if your project has a zipper never ever close it all the way because if you do and you sew everything together you won't be able to reach in and pull it out and your zipper will be in the way and you'll be trying to open this zipper up from the back side and it's just a pain so always roll of thumb never close your zipper all the way leave it halfway or a little bit more than halfway open on every single project even if the zipper being closed doesn't matter um, that way you will never get yourself in a bind having the zipper closed and you can't turn your back all right so we are going to go have some lunch and we'll come back when we come back i'll finish this tutorial and uh, we'll see you soon okay we are back from lunch so i did open this up so now we have a hole here at the bottom we have our zipper halfway open and we're gonna set this aside because we're done with that for now the last couple things we have to do before we can put this all together is we have to um, put on the handles and then we have to sew these two pieces the two outer pieces together so let's put the handles on first i got too much stuff going on here so we've got one handle i think what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to measure in uh four inches so here we've got one two three four now I'm going to put one of these right here at the four inch mark, or one end. We're going to flip it. Then we're going to take the other end, make sure it's not twisted, and measure four inches from this side. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to put this right here, clip it. So I'll hold that up for you guys so we're four inches in this way four inches in this way and we're just going to stitch across those a couple of times to secure that in place we'll do that on this side and we'll do the same thing on the other side okay so now we have that secured on we're going to get the other panel Make sure your cutouts are at the bottom. Move this over here out of the way. And we're going to measure one, two, three, four. Put this here. Clip it in place. Bring this around. Make sure it's not twisted. And then we're going to measure one, two, three, four. And then again, we're going to stitch across those two top to secure it in place. Go back and forth a couple of times. Okay, so now we have that attached. So now we're going to put these right sides together. Handles are going to be down inside the sandwiched in between. we'll go in a little bit okay so now we are going to just stitch across here stitch across the bottom make sure everything's lined up stitch across up here we're going to leave these corners alone make sure to back stitch at the top and the bottom also, you might want to back stitch. I'm going to back stitch a couple times over where the pocket is here so it gives a little bit more stability. Okay, 
Okay, now that we have that sewn together, we're going to open this up and sew across the edges like that, just like we did before. We're going to line up those seams. Now this is going to be bulky on this seam, so you might want to turn one seam one way and the other seam the other way, if that makes sense. So it's not so much bulk there, but that's up to you. If your machine can handle it, go for it. Same thing on this side. Like this, and then we'll do one seam one way, one seam go turn the other. All right, so now you have the inside or the outside of your bag constructed and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and attach this up here with a quick basting stitch. Uh, just so it doesn't flop around as we're maneuvering things here. Just real quick, just do like a real shallow, um, like one eighth inch seam there. That way it's not showing through when you use the stitch. Just to hold it down. this constructed we're going to take our outside or inside sorry I'm gonna unzip it a little bit more what we need to do is put this inside this but to do it I'm gonna move you guys a little bit sorry hopefully you can still see but to do it this needs to be right sides out Right? You, when you're sewing things, majority of the time you want right sides together, so that's why we need to turn this. But if you look at it, here's your pocket. It's all nice and neat in there, okay? Our straps need to be on the outside. Okay. And now, here's, here's where things um where you need to decide uh, where you want your slip pocket on the inside. Do you want it to be on the back side or you want it to be on the front side up against this other pocket? Personally, I would put it towards the back so you don't have the bulk of both pockets on one portion of the, um, the design or one portion of the, the bag. But really, it's all up to you, it's your preference. That's the beauty of making your own bag. You can put things wherever you want them. So we're going to slide this in here. Making sure our right sides are together. You're going to tuck. Make sure your straps are in between the layers. Between the lining and the outside. You might have to unzip this all the way. Okay, so we are going to line up our seams here. So this is the lining seam, this is the exterior seam. We're going to line that up and clip it. Do the same thing on the other side. Line that up and clip it in place. We're going to make sure that everything just fits kind of snug up against each other. So we're just going to clip both pieces together, line them up. Just clipping along here. So as you can see here, this kind of sticks up a little bit further than the rest of it. That is okay. We're going to leave it alone for now. 
what we're going to do is take this to the machine and we're going to do like a quarter inch, maybe a five eighths inch, whatever seam allowance you prefer. We're going to stitch all the way around the edge, outer edge, to attach both of those together. So let's do that. Uh, you, uh, it's best if you take off your uh, that part of your machine so that you can turn the uh, bag underneath. There is no right or wrong place to start and stop. Um, usually I like to do it on the back side. That way if my stitches don't line up just perfectly, um, it's on the back of the bag and you can't see it. When we get to the handles, we're going to back stitch over them to reinforce that. Because depending on what you plan to use this bag for, it might be uh, heavy materials and you want to give that um, handle some strength. Okay, so we have sewn all the way around. I am going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut this down so we don't have a bunch of bulk in that seam. If you want to cut it down, do not cut into your stitching, otherwise you will have to start over with that step. And I'm only doing it right there, I'm not going to do it around the um, whole thing. I just wanted to get that extra fabric out of the way. Now I'm going to pull this out through the bottom of the, that hole that we made at the bottom. And here you will see this is why you need your zipper opened otherwise you wouldn't have been able to pull that through. Always have your zipper open. Always, always. So you can reach in here through your little hole, push out your seams, your bottom seams here, make sure everything's pushed out nicely. Okay, so next step we're going to tuck our um, lining inside. So you're just going to push it inside. Sometimes sticking your hands in there and just moving that fabric where it needs to rest in there works best. Now we are, I need to cut some threads here, I just have some stray threads I'm cutting away. Okay, So here we want to roll this, hopefully you can see, we need to roll this so that the seam is even and then you're going you can either clip it you can take it to your iron and press it i'm just going to clip it it's a little bulky right here that's why it's having trouble rolling if i left that extra fabric there it would have been even more harder to to turn We're just going to roll this seam all the way around so it's nice and even. Once we do that, we'll take it to the sewing machine and we're going to do a top stitch all the way around. And that's going to hold that fabric, that seam in place, give it some stability and give it a finishing look.
so we've got the seam rolled. When we take it to the sewing machine, we'll make sure our handles are out like this. We don't want to stitch over our handles like this because then our handles will be down and not up. So we want our handles up. And then we're just gonna stitch all the way around. Also look inside here, make sure all your zipper and everything is out of the way. You're not gonna catch it in there. It's not pulled up like this or anything. It's all out of the way. So we are good there. I'm gonna take it to the machine and just like before, I'm going to stitch around. This time I'm gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then we'll be right back. Clean up your threads here. Find your scissors. Okay, we only have one more step. And remember that opening that we put in the bottom of the bag? Now we need to close that up. So we're gonna pull the inside of the bag up and out of the out of the middle of it. We are going to, mine is kind of fraying, so I'm going to clean that up a little bit here. Just probably because I didn't, um, I had to undo my stitching there because I forgot to leave the hole. Anyway, so we're going to tuck that under. Anyways, okay, so we're going to do it like this. Fold those raw edges in and just try and line up that seam as best you can. Now here you can close this up two ways. You can hand stitch it close so that this is a seamless. Um, okay, so we are either going to hand stitch this together, um, doing like a hidden stitch where you stitch both sides closed or because I'm lazy and I don't like to spend that time doing it, we're just going to put this up on the machine and stitch across to close that up. Alright, so here's that. You just Sewed that up, cleaned up our stitches, our loose threads, and now we're going to tuck this in. Here, and then you can go around cleaning up all your straggly threads that popped out or left behind. And there you go. Your bag is now finished. So you have this pocket here that's accessible on both sides. You've got your straps here. There's the back. And on the inside here, open this up. And inside, here's your slip pocket. And then you've got all this room here to store whatever you want in there. And let's measure the final product here so you know exactly what size we have. So from top to bottom, we are seven and a half inches from left to right, from seam to seam, I should say. It is. Right at 15 inches. Your bottom should be four inches because we did two inches on each side and it is four inches. Hopefully you can see that. It 
is four inches. And then when you open up the side like this, should also be four inches in depth. And it is. So there we go. So like I said, I use that stable that um, fusible fleece. So it does have some sturdiness, but it is still kind of floppy, which was the kind of look I was going for. This pocket has some sturdiness in it, but not too stiff. And then same thing on the inside here. This pocket is sturdy, but not too stiff. So it kind of just flows in there nicely. So hopefully you can see the inside of that. And then this pocket, because we put that um, extra fabric on there, it's lined. Everything looks nice. No raw fabric. No, um, you don't see the back side of fabric anywhere in this project now. It's all enclosed. Okay, so hopefully you found this tutorial of value. Um, hopefully you guys can follow on uh, everything hopefully i explained it as best as i could for you guys to be able to make this on your own if you have any questions at all feel free to put those in the comments below and i will have be happy to answer those or you can find us on instagram and send us a message there if you need you can get a hold of me either on the comments or on instagram and um if you like these bag tutorials, please let me know and I will continue to do like a bag series and add those in along with my embroidery and uh, clothing tutorials. So here's the bag we did. All right. Uh, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I appreciate all your support and we love you very much and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.